Malik Neighbors is the most electric player in the 2024 draft class. He would undoubtedly take the Jets' offense to new heights. So should Joe Douglas trade up for the LSU wideout? Let's take a look at the film. What is going on everybody? It's Luke here from Play Like a Jet and we're back in the film room with another All-22 breakdown and today we have to dive in to the Malik Neighbors film. I understand he's a heavily discussed prospect. Most people think he won't make it out of the top 5, never mind the top 10, but in the NFL Network's last two mocks, Peter Schrager, Chad Ruder, he's gone at number 9 and 14 respectively. He's becoming a more realistic option for the Jets, and boy would he add some dynamism next to GW5. So let's have a look at the All-22. First clip here, we're going to dive into his yards after catch ability and that electricity that he has. In the slot, left-hand side of your screen, look how Neighbors does an incredible job running through the catch point, but the foresight, the vision, and that burst is otherworldly. I want to break down something really nuanced here. At the catch point, Neighbors frees it right here. You can see he extends that left leg. He feels the safety thumping from center field, puts that left foot in the ground, bang, gets around him, and then that re-acceleration to add 20 yards after the catch. Guys, I don't think you understand how special this is. What a freakish athlete. The vision, the burst, the wiggle. He is just a rubber band, and I was so impressed by the Malik Neighbors film. This time against Texas A&M, you're going to see Neighbors in motion from left to right across your screen. He's going to get a free release here schemed up. We've got a speed out in the quick game, and look at him go to work. 11 yards behind the sticks, and he turns it into a first down. Once again, guys, I just want to accentuate that this isn't just a strength to his game. This is one of the best yards after the catch receivers we've seen over the last five or 10 years. First of all, does a nice job getting the separation on the speed out, catches the football, frees it right here. He's got his back foot on the 25-yard line, a defender closing down. We've got a spin move to break the first tackle, but this is where it gets special. You've got a defender coming from the secondary. He's breaking it down, and Neighbors bang still makes him look silly. Just effortless change of direction. That wiggle, and again, I'll say it, that re-acceleration is just next level. It's difficult to compare it to anyone in the NFL right now other than a Tyreek Hill. He has that kind of athleticism. Once again, we saw neighbors do it on a deeper route across the field against zone. This time, short passing game, making people miss in a phone booth. He has got it all after the catch. And one last example to really ram home the point, right hand side of your screen, Malik Neighbors finds the soft spot against zone, but look how quickly he makes that first move and gets north-south down the field to break tackles against Florida. I really like that as this ball is coming from Daniels, he's already starting to turn his body. He's thinking about making the next guy miss, and he does it so effectively. This time, you're actually going to see him run through an arm tackle, that strength and balance after contact, and that paired with the re-acceleration makes him a nightmare to tackle in the open field. Malik Neighbors, a yards after the catch freak. So while the Yak skill set is out of this world, Neighbors is even more effective because of his deep threat ability. The speed and once again the reacceleration is tremendous. This is going to be one of the best double moves you've ever seen on the outside. Neighbors right hand side of your screen. Look how he eats into the cushion against Mississippi State, sinks his hips and he's gone. This looks like a busted coverage, but he is just that elite at restarting his engine, the hip sink, how low he gets to the ground, and then bang, he is gone in a flash. That is tremendous route running, great body control, the ability to sell curl right here. Look at the corner. He has to jump on this route. He has sunk his hips. He's starting to turn his shoulders, and then bang, it is over. This is special, paired with that yards after catch ability. But these vertical route tree wins and the double move success, they were not one-offs. Heck, here's one from the same game against Mississippi State. This time, Neighbors does it against cover three, Bail. Look at him at the top of your screen, just explode, fake the 10-yard curl, and then he finds that extra gear, secures the over-the-shoulder catch, and takes it all the way down to the one-yard line. 
I can't stress how difficult it is to do this right here against cover three bail. The corner has leverage and cushion, but he does such an elite job selling the curl and then getting out of his break and finding that next level speed to still secure the catch. This isn't terrible technique from the corner, but Neighbors is just that good. Look how he gets him to stop his feet, square his hips for just a moment, and then he puts on the afterburners and does a really nice job tracking the football, something we haven't said a ton so far. Malik Neighbors has speed to burn, yes. We've seen that with the yards after catch ability, but it's the nuance in his deep route running that really make him a special threat. And the last trait that I wanted to hit on when breaking down the Malik Neighbors film is his body control at the catch point. Here are a couple of phenomenal examples on slot fades. With his speed and this innate ability to contort his body, it's going to be a tough combination to stop. Left hand side of the screen, at number two wide receiver. Look how Neighbors doesn't need separation on this occasion. It's all about being smooth and adjusting to the football. I love the way that he identifies when this ball's in the air, it's a back shoulder ball, and just look how fluid he is. The ability to flip his hips, contort in the air, and just snatch that ball and get his feet down to boot. Now, I don't want you to get confused with me saying that Malik Neighbors is an elite contested catch guy or has great hands at the catch point because I don't think that's the case. I am talking about his ability to just be smooth through the air and to move his body when he needs to, to adjust to a football. That's a really nice ability to have when you're running these type of routes, the slot fades. And one more example from the same position in the LSU formation, not a whole lot of separation, but the speed gets him just enough of a window to earn the target. And once again, Daniels does a great job with the outside shoulder location. Malik Neighbors does the rest. The ability to adjust is really important. And Aaron Rodgers loves these type of throws. Malik Neighbors next to Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams. That would be a ridiculous combination. So I think we can all agree that Malik Neighbors would look incredible in the green and white. But here's the real question. Is this a feasible possibility? I think it's starting to become somewhat realistic. Now, should the Jets trade up to five or six? No, they don't have the assets. They're already down a second round pick. But if he slips past the charges and he starts getting into that seven or eight range... I think you need to be aggressive. You're in a win-now window. The NFL pundits have him slipping slightly on their draft boards and in their mock drafts. And if Malik Neighbors is paired with Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams, the Jets just might have their Super Bowl combination.